In this Dexy build video, our focus will be to get all of the internals in place so that we can follow up with mounting the bottom plate. So before we do that, let's talk about some of the hardware that I have in front of me. We have standoffs, which we will mount all around this top plate. We have our eight millimeter screws. Once again, those are the ones that we want to use for the standoffs. The six millimeters are what we use to mount the motors and then washers. You'll see some blue and some black here. Your kit will come with blue. I'm actually running low from another build, so I will be using the black washers. So let's go ahead and get started. These are 35 millimeter M3 standoffs. You'll see we have holes all around the frame. We'll then grab an eight millimeter screw with a button head washer, place this up through the bottom of the top plate. We can hand tighten this down. We'll go ahead and just do everything by hand initially. And once everything's enclosed, we'll go ahead and tighten everything down with the two millimeter hex driver. There are quite a few standoffs around the Dexy frame and also internally. We designed it this way for additional rigidity. Dexy is a very uh, durable and strong frame. You'll actually be amazed once we get everything mounted and secured, it can stand quite the uh, beating. I'll continue by placing the eight millimeter screw through the washer. We'll go around the outside of the frame and then there are a few standoffs that we want to do on the inside. Let's take a look at what we have so far. Standoffs all around the outside of this top plate. I'll put this bottom plate on just for reference. See all of those we have four internally that will protect our artboard and then one on each side here. So six final ones, we'll just take a look. The other side, make sure we didn't miss any washers. So see our washers all the way around. When you have the blue ones, it actually looks really cool, very nice and professional. Let me just wrap up by getting our final six standoffs installed. Our six interior standoffs are installed. We'll just double check from the other side. See two here, two here, then one and two in the middle. And let me just make one call out as you're doing this assembly. You'll notice that there are two holes on each motor arm. Those holes represent where we'll put zip ties to connect these MR30s and secure them. So make sure that you pay attention when you install these four standoffs. You want to install them in the proper standoff holes and then leave each of these two holes available for our zip ties. Let's proceed with connecting our motors to the four in one ESC. So you'll see we can just plug in at each corner this makes it nice and simple for us to connect our motors and in the future do any repairs or upgrades. We'll follow up with routing our cables properly. We'll just put them around the standoff here. The length of these wires are perfect. You can see here that we'll just be able to secure a zip tie right here around the MR30. So I'll go ahead and do each of the motors do the same for this side and then our last motor and you'll see that these are routed inside of these standoffs when we get to the part of the build where we place our propellers we want to make sure we have everything clear so there are no obstructions for our propellers to spin and give us proper thrust before we zip tie our mr30 connectors i want to make sure that our camera cable is routed to the front of Dexy. And so what we'll do is I'll go ahead and just pull this connector up. We're going to route the cable downwards towards the top plate. I'm gonna put this on the other side of the standoff and then route it around this front standoff here Okay, the routing is done. See, we're coming down here. Front of this standoff, as well as the arc standoff, we'll feed this into the Pi camera. Let's just take a closer look to be sure. 
once again, you'll recall when we installed this camera cable and in front of this arc standoff, we have the gold pins facing towards the arc board, coming out, going down in front of this standoff and in front of this arc standoff. This is probably one of the most challenging parts of the build, but fairly straightforward to do. So now that our Pi camera cable is routed properly, I'll put the MR30 back down, and now everything is routed properly. We'll move forward with placing our zip ties. In your kit, you'll find several zip ties that you can use. I like to run them from this side of the plate. So I'll put them through one of the holes, bring it back down through, and we'll run that just over the middle of the connector here. Make sure our cables are nice and flat. And I'll repeat that for the other three MR30 connectors. Zip ties are in place. I'll trim the excess coming off of these. Go ahead and flip it over, take a quick look, make sure everything looks good. And this just adds a nice uh, professional touch to the build. Obviously, once again, keeps these leads nice and secure out of the way of our propellers. So now that we have that done, we're going to move on to the Pi camera mount. This is what you will receive in the build. It is a tilted camera mount that has the Pi camera tilted slightly downward so we have better visibility of the ground. And this is our standard flat mount that just has the camera field of view pointed straight out. While we provide this in the kit, both 3D prints are available in our GitHub repository. So you're more than welcome to download and print. We always recommend printing in TPU for a little bit of that flexibility and vibration damping. To install the camera, you'll notice the four mounting holes. Those will align with the four holes in our 3D print. So I'll grab each of the four screws, just go ahead and place them through. We'll slide the camera board onto the screws. Then we'll use these small lock nuts to secure on the back of the board. These little lock nuts can be a bit challenging to work with. They're very tiny. So I recommend doing your best to hand tighten them on. And then there will be a link in the documentation to a little uh, 3D printed wrench. So you'll just be able to put that on use your 1.5 millimeter side of your hex driver gently screw the lock nut on this thing works really well and no need to over tighten that'll keep it nice and secure i'll proceed with the other three our lock nuts are in place we'll give a front view here see the camera you'll notice dexy on the bottom here and then dexy on top that just gives us uh, better reference for orientation. So now I'll go ahead and slide this onto the top plate. One of the things that I just love about this build, done several of them now, is the attention to detail that our team has put uh, on this build and a lot of the 3D printed parts. It just makes it really nice and professional, nice touch. Now you'll notice the camera pointed down towards the ground and gives us a nice uh, field of view for us to do some cool stuff with computer vision in the future. On the rear of the camera board, you'll notice this port and we'll just pull up on these tabs on each side, which will give us the ability to plug our cable in. Now, a word of caution, if you've ever worked with Pi cameras, this tab can be uh, very fragile. So just be careful, don't overdo it pull it up on each side, get it out, and make sure that you don't uh, pull too hard. We'll talk about the gold connectors like we did on the other end. We want those facing the board, so you'll notice that I'll just go top down right here. I'll slide that in. I'll set this down just to make my life a little bit easier and make sure everything is flush and lined up on each side, and I'll just push down on each side of the connector and now you can see that our camera cable goes from the side out of the arc board in front of the standoff, in front of the standoff on the arc board, comes up and then plugs uh, directly into the camera board with the gold pins facing the board. 
And last but not least, we want to install our Wi-Fi SMA connector so we can just easily screw that on and we want that to be accessible through the top plate. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate where this will go right here in the rear of the frame. And let me make a call out related to these washers and this nut. This is important. It's something I learned a while back and never understood the ordering as it relates to installing this. So here we have the tooth washer or also known as star washer, uh, standard lock washer, and then a nut. So we want to install this star washer first on the top. You'll notice that there are these little teeth that we want pointed down to grip into the carbon fiber plate. So I'll go ahead and put that on. Those teeth pointed down, our lock washer, and then finally our nut. Hand tighten that as much as you possibly can. Then I recommend just going back with a pair of needle nose or if you have a socket that'll fit this nut, that should keep it really secure. Those teeth will grab into this top plate and hopefully that will never come loose. Great job. I know there were a lot of steps, pretty basic steps to get the top plate ready. In the next video, we'll talk about the bottom plate, peripherals, and then we'll be ready to configure and fly.